Sports Illustrated, All-American side of things, National Director of Recruiting for Sports Illustrated. John Garcia, I hope you're having an awesome Monday, man. Welcome into the game in T-Town. I'm doing well, Ryan. Happy Monday to you. Hey, John, we're, we're trying to do this with our callers, and we're trying to do this with our guests uh, as well. Uh, what's it like in your area there? Uh, can you kind of give us an update? Uh, I think sorry. Ooh, I think our we- opening with tables pretty far apart, things like that. Uh, so we're, we're slowly but surely down here in the Tampa area, so I'm excited about it. We got back out on the beach last week, so that was a big thing for me. I got you. Now, I'm coming to your state to uh, to go to the beach. I'm going down to uh, Destin uh, next week. It's an annual trip that we usually go for the SEC spring meetings, but those have been canceled. Uh, but still going, still going. I'm not canceling. I, I'm not going to be like the SEC and uh, cancel. I, I I just want to go enjoy. I mean, after this 60-day quarantine, I feel like we all need a little bit of a beach life. Yeah, and, they, and they've done a really good job, especially, you know, here in Pinellas County. They're, they're really organized with everything. You pretty much have to fight to be close to somebody. So uh, I think with that organization, it's going to be good going forward anyway. Uh, so it's much more regulated than, than it was previously. So, yeah, I think you'll have a good time. John, give me a player perspective because we've, we've kind of thrown this out. One of our uh, – uh, callers have brought this up and we've been kind of discussing this from a player's perspective do you think they're going to be hesitant of going back in a locker room with with the coronavirus outbreak i think to some degree it's going to be you know weird the first few times um but but really you know i i think a locker room setting there's really no way to to fully protect yourself so i think once once that all clear you know, happens, I think everyone's going to be ready to go. So I think there's going to be some mixed feelings there to a degree, but it's one of those where I think the, the reward outweighs the risk for this age group, especially if, you know, if it's a typical college kid who's, you know, in his late teens or early 20s living with, with those, you know, healthy folks in the same age range or whatnot, I, I think for them it'll be pretty much normal. And, and we've actually already seen a lot of, young prospects working out together and, and, you know, trying to get in as much work as they possibly can. So I, I think there's a, there's a fatigue with a lot of this, especially with the younger generation, which I guess is to be expected. So when you, you know, when you look at athletes, um, uh, I mean, most of you guys will drink after the same Gatorade, uh, jug multiple times. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I, I, uh, listen, man, I mean, I, I got a real good friend, obviously you play football at the university of Alabama and, uh, I'm a germophobia guy. He's complete opposite. I mean, complete opposite. He's like, man, you, you just you don't do it. Uh, as far as you don't ever think about things like that. So I think those guys inside that locker room, they're going to be. I mean, you know how we were when we were eighteen, nineteen, and twenty, uh, six foot tall and bulletproof. Man, nothing could hurt us. Exactly. So you know, I think those kind of things will be tweaked. You'll see some modifications with the procedure in between everything. Um, but but once once the bullets are, are live, uh, I think everything will feel normal for those kids. And I think a lot of them need that. I think we talk about, you know, from a selfish perspective, just wanting to, to watch the entertainment of football. But for a lot of these kids, the structure of meetings, school, workout, practice, et cetera, really was, was the foundation of shaping where they're going, you know, with their future. And without that, we've seen a lot of, question marks, whether it's kids who, who go home and don't want to come back, or transfer portal, all those things. So there's so many other layers uh, to the conversation. But in terms of procedure, yeah, I do think those those small things will be tweaked. I don't think you'll be seeing kids sharing the same Gatorade anymore, little things like that for sure. John, Alabama has is picking up some momentum when you look at uh, the recruiting side of things. Uh I'm 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 curious, kind of, where do you see it? Because it it feels this way here in Tuscaloosa. Is that coming true on the recruiting front? It is, you know, and this is something that you, know, you have been talking of, about for several weeks. <laughs> yes, yeah, you know, you you expect it to start to uptick. I think once there was any sort of light at the end of the tunnel, you were going to see some some positive action from from Alabama on the recruiting trail. And look. You go in anytime you go into Louisiana. I don't care if they have zero commits or twenty. You know, it's a it's a big deal. You know, so going in and getting Kane Williams uh, was was a really 
really important get uh, on and off the field. I think perceptionally, especially, especially for Pete Golding. I think he's caught some, whether you, you think it's necessary or unnecessary, he's caught some flack uh, from, from the hardcore Bama recruiting fans for maybe a lack of, of pizzazz on the trail. So I think that goes against that quite a bit. Uh, and, and they're going to start to roll with, with familiar positions, right? We expect Alabama to bring in great defensive prospects. We expect Alabama to bring in great wide receivers. You know, um, we expect them to get a quarterback in this class. Things like that are, are going to round into form here. Um, and I think the, the future looks pretty good uh, in the near future for Alabama. I think uh, in-state linebacker Ian Jackson is a guy I'm, I'm keeping an eye on, although he says he's really taking his time going through these virtual visits. Uh, and then back in Florida for another receiver. I mean, Christian Leary, uh, it's set to come off the board June 6th. Uh, he's got he's got a Henry Ruggs vibe about him, and I think anything close to that would probably make Alabama fans happy. And, and right now that looks like an Alabama-Oklahoma battle with the Gators mixed in there a little bit as the in-state option. So I think if Alabama can close there, they got to feel good about the entire wide receiver group, which ironically enough would all be from the state of Florida. Let's go back to Ja'Cory Brooks here, uh, four-star wide receiver out of Booker T. Washington there in Miami. Uh, Alabama's had a pretty good pipeline with wide receivers uh, out of South Florida. Can this guy be that next? He's so different than than I would say the the smooth route runners that have come from Miami in the past, whether you're talking Coop, Jerry Judy, uh, Calvin Ridley, certainly. Uh, Ja'Cory is bigger and more physical, 6'3", 190 pounds. He's a basketball guy now, so once, once that part of his game is, is in the past, you're talking about a 6'3", 210-pound alpha type of wide receiver, and he's not just big in that, that, that he has that frame. He plays like he has that frame. He wants to be the enforcer. He is the aggressor against defensive back, which is something you're seeing less and less these days. So there's really a lot of what you like there with Ja'Cory Brooks, whether it's from a pure wide receiver perspective in terms of catching passes, strong on in-breaking routes, very good after the catch, and a little bit faster than you would think uh, for a kid that size. But then off the football, great blocker, willing blocker, captain of a powerhouse in Miami, and extra productive as well when all eyes knew when the ball was going in the air for the Tornadoes, number seven was was the top target. So all of those things are are huge boxes checked for Ja'Cory Brooks, and I think the fit at a place like Alabama could not be much better. He's probably my favorite get to this point uh, in Alabama's 2021 class. So when we go back, uh, John, to to this class, everybody wants to know, does Alabama going to be able to recruit a talented quarterback in this class? What do you see? Still some big names on the board. I mean, it, for me, it still starts with Miller Moss, the, the quarterback out of California, down to four. Uh, but, but some of those schools already have prospects committed at the quarterback position, so that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, and then two of his schools are in the state of California, and right now anything football-related in the state of California is, is sort of up in the air. Uh, there's a lot of conversation going on as to whether or not you know these high school kids are going to have a season out there. I think it's more in doubt in California maybe than anywhere else in America. I think New York feels better about playing high school football than California at this point, which is crazy to say out loud, but California has been so – early to make decisions that I think uh, it's affecting a lot of these, these high school kids out there, whether it means for their 2020 season or, of course, where they're going to play their college ball. And, and there's been a, an SEC draw to Miller Moss. Um, he admits when he talks to Nick Saban, it's just different compared to talking to every other coach. He's very tight with Coach Sark. Of course, his kids still in L.A. Uh, they all know each other. So I think there's a lot of momentum for Alabama with Miller Moss. Um, They're still in it with a couple of other quarterbacks, and there's still some uncommitted quarterbacks available, but those dominoes have been falling pretty steadily right now. So I think that's really the next frontier for Alabama to to see their class look familiar and and start to look like a potential top one, two, or three type of class nationally. I think you got to get your quarterback, and and right now my, my focus is on Miller Moss for the time. And that's, that's pretty challenging when you've got a quarterback that hadn't even went through a spring practice or any type of practice and knowing how talented he's going to be, uh, that may even hurt Alabama, you know, once they see Bryce Young going, oh, man, this is going to be a, you know, three or four-year starter here in T-Town or even a three-year starter. But, uh, 
you know, Nick Saban also knows how to play the game, and I'm sure he'll play him just enough uh, to keep the guessing out there. <laughs> right, always, always. The quarterback battles always go into the next season, it feels sure. like. And look, right now, with, with Talia Tungvaluwa departing to Maryland, you need a quarterback. There's, there's a depth question mark now to a degree uh, at Alabama. I mean, what if, what if Mac Jones starts and blows up this year and, and heads off to the NFL? There's just not a lot there in terms of numbers in the quarterback room, and that's always a, a big deal. Uh, and that's something that every college coach worries about. So I think you could see Alabama become even more aggressive on the recruiting trail at that position, even than a week or two before um, when Talia was still on that Alabama roster. Alabama has to get a quarterback in this 2021 class. Everything else, to me, feels sort of like chalk. Like, it's going to happen. They're going to load up at certain positions. Wide receiver is going to be a hefty haul in state. There are great prospects uh, on the defensive side of the ball in particular. So there's so many clear building blocks for Alabama. But but quarterback's going to be that big question mark. And I think, he, like you said, Nick Saban knows what he's doing. And I think you see a little bit of an uptick with Alabama uh, going forward at that position. So, John, going back to Michael Oxley and Talia, uh, pretty big pickup here for Michael Oxley, though. I mean, this, this is somewhere that can really uh, be a part of his building blocks there at the University of Maryland. Yeah, you know, the last, gosh, the last six months or so for Michael Oxley and the recruiting trail have been excellent. I mean, they flipped an LSU wide receiver commitment on early signing day. They rolled into traditional signing day well in their relative area. And then in this 21 class, have picked up some national names on the recruiting trail. But no doubt, I think just having a single value level on your roster right now means a lot, um, you know, for other prospects, for visibility, things like that. Um, and from Talia's perspective, it's such a great fit. You know, forget the longstanding relationship and the familiarity, just the schematic fit um, is, is maybe better. Than, than he had at Alabama, not not in terms of um, just the quarterback room and, and maybe lesser talent, which which we can all agree Maryland has right now compared to Alabama in that room, but just on the field, X's and O's, what they want the quarterback to do, more of a point guard type of style is, is how I define what Mike Loxley likes to do. Uh, and Talia fits that to such a strong degree. Um, and obviously, he's, you know, he's got to be excited to, to think about the possibilities considering what Tua did under Mike Loxley. So the fit there makes a ton of sense. Um, but again, for Maryland, you're, you're always under that, well, we, we have this great recruiting ground in the DMV area to work with, but everybody comes here and grabs our top guys. So anything to promote visibility at a program like Maryland is a very big deal. And, and if you're getting a quarterback named Single Vailoa, that'll do the trick. And that's why it's one of the few sort of national storylines that we've followed uh, during this quarantine. You know, we've seen a lot of transfers, a lot of movement, but few got the buzz that Talia's transfer did. So kudos to Mike Locksley. We've, we've always known what he can do on the trail, and, and now we know he can do it in the portal as well. John Garcia underscore junior. Tell us more about happen- the happenings at SI.com, the All-American side of Sports Illustrated, as you guys cover the world of recruiting. Yeah, SIAllAmerican.com, football and basketball. got a great basketball feature up today on, on sort of the, the young top talent on the hardwood reacting to seeing really Michael Jordan for the first time in depth like that on the last dance. Really interesting to see their perspective compared to you and me who, who watched Jordan when we were younger. Uh, so a good perspective on football and basketball. That's what we try to bring at SI All American. It's not your traditional recruiting coverage. We really want to pass the torch to the kids and let them have their own voice. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do. It is SI Sports Illustrated, the All-American side of things. The best way to connect with John Garcia is straight up at John Garcia underscore junior, at John Garcia underscore junior. John, as always, we thank you so much for your time, man. I hope you have a tremendous day and a tremendous week, and we'll talk to you very, very soon. Likewise, Ryan. Thanks for having me back. Thank you.